So we've had some time to sit and ponder the NBA's official list of the 75 greatest players of all time. Although new two lists are alike, there are certainly some glaring omissions from this list that the basketball community seems to agree upon. I'll have some of those on this list for sure, but I may also have some other players you hadn't thought of. As you guys requested, here's the most disrespectful snubs from the 75 greatest list. First, what seems to be the most popular choice, Dwight Howard. Whether you're looking at peak performance or complete body of work, Dwight certainly deserves to be on the list and is definitely more accomplished than current players like Anthony Davis and Damian Lillard. Quite frankly, his resume is stacked as he's an NBA champion, made eight All-NBA teams, five All-Defense teams, has five rebounding titles, two blocks titles, and won three straight Defensive Player of the Year awards, which trails only Ben Wallace and Dikembe Mutombo on the all-time list. You could even argue that guys like Ben Wallace and Dikembe Mutombo should have made the list because of their dominant defense, but those guys also didn't have a strong presence on the offensive end. But you can't say that about Dwight Howard, who was constantly averaging north of 20 points per game during his prime. Once upon a time, ESPN even went as far as ranking Howard as the second best player in the NBA. Now like Kobe Bryant once said, I do think ESPN is full of idiots. But this second ranking specifically wasn't that far-fetched during Howard's prime. No matter how you look at it, he deserves to be ahead of some other players on this list, and I think this snub specifically will go down as the 75's version of the 50's Dominique Wilkins. Alonzo Mourning I rarely hear his name get brought up, but I've been pushing him a lot lately, and for good reason. Mourning is one of the most underrated greats of all time, and was one of the fiercest defensive players. Sure, he seems like a player from an era who would be more suited to be selected in the original 50, but he actually accomplished a lot after the 50 greatest ceremony, including two Defensive Player of the Year awards and an NBA championship to go along with his seven all-star selections and two blocks titles. Similar to Dwight Howard, not only was Mourning a dominant defensive player, but in his prime, he was often his team's leading scorer, averaging north of 20 points per game. Even in his twilight years, he was very impactful, and many people often forget just how critical he was to the success of the Shaq and Wade Heat in 2006. Despite coming off the bench for Shaq that season, he was still in the Defensive Player of the Year conversation and even finished with some first place votes. Adrian Dantley. Maybe he's not the most accomplished player from an accolade standpoint, but he's certainly one of the most underappreciated scorers of NBA history. During a four-year stretch with the Utah Jazz in the 1980s, he was among the best of the best as he averaged over 30 points per game in four straight seasons. The only players who have a longer streak of seasons are Michael Jordan and Wilt Chamberlain. Literally no one else. What's even more impressive is the fact that Dantley shot an insane 56.4% over that four season stretch. He was also the 1977 Rookie of the Year. He has six All-Star selections and two scoring titles. I understand it's difficult to add older players to the 75 list when the biggest crime is probably the fact that they were not on the 50 list in 1997. But regardless, this is a man whose talent certainly deserves to be in the conversation. Vince Carter. For many years now, basketball's most famous and exciting play has been the slam dunk, and the fact that the greatest dunker ever isn't on this list just doesn't feel right. Carter was so much more than just that though. He was an eight-time All-Star and the 1999 Rookie of the Year. In his prime, he was among the best scorers and the best wing players in the entire league, and is currently in the top 20 of the NBA's all-time scoring leaders. He was also a lethal three-point shooter throughout his career with both efficiency and volume, as he currently sits in sixth place on the NBA's all-time list in three-pointers made. If you think of the greatest dunkers of all time, you'll realize that not many of them can also claim to be one of the greatest perimeter shooters of all time. But that is something that the one known as Half Man, Half Amazing can say about himself. Tony Parker other than Tim Duncan, the Spurs championship dynasty seems pretty underappreciated with this list. Although Parker was never widely recognized as the best point guard in the league, he was at least consistently among the elites with his solid distributing and his fantastic mid-range and interior scoring. He was a six-time All-Star, made four All-NBA teams, and won four NBA championships. 
He was also the Finals MVP in 2007 when his Spurs swept the Cavaliers. You're going to be hard pressed to find a co-star who's won as much as Tony did yet did not make the 50 greatest list. Clay Thompson I understand he has only 8 seasons under his belt, but when you remove him from being under the shadow of Steph Curry as simply the Warriors second best player, you begin to realize just how incredibly accomplished Thompson really is. He's a 5 time All-Star and a 3 time NBA Champion, who also has an All Defense Team appearance and is just an underappreciated defensive player in general. He has the record for the most points ever scored in a single quarter with 37, and he holds the record for the most 3 pointers ever made in a single game with 14. If it wasn't for Steph Curry, we would probably be recognizing Klay Thompson as the best 3 point shooter in the game in an era that's all about 3 point shooting. Again, it's only the first half of his career, but Clay has accomplished more in his half than most superstars do in their entire career. Alex English Despite all the dominant scores of the 1980s, no player scored more points over the course of the decade than this man, Alex English. He was an 8-time All-Star, made 3 All-NBA teams, and was the 1983 scoring champion. Not only did his elite mid-range game enable him to be an elite scorer, but he was incredibly efficient while doing it. Of all the wing players who have at least 25,000 points over the course of their career, Alex is the most efficient from the field with a career percentage of 50.7%. He was the focal point of the Denver Nuggets high-octane offense, but were just never able to get past the Showtime Lakers despite several deep postseason runs. To finish my list is Sidney Moncrief. Sidney was a 6'3 point guard slash shooting guard who spent the majority of his career with the Milwaukee Bucks through the 1980s. In NBA history, only 5 guards have ever won the Defensive Player of the Year award, and of those 5, Moncrief was the only player who won the award multiple times. The thing is, the Defensive Player of the Year award was introduced in 1983, and that's when Moncrief immediately started winning them. But a lot of people think he was the best defensive player in 1982 as well, so if the award had been available, then he likely would have been the Defensive Player of the Year for three straight seasons as a guard. Needless to say, that is pretty incredible. He was a remarkably gifted athlete and was a reliable and incredibly efficient scorer, especially by point guard standards, as he shot above 50% from the field over the course of his career, averaging as high as 22.5 points per game in 1983. So now it's your turn. What do you think were the most disrespectful snubs from the NBA 75 greatest list? Let me know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching as always. Make sure to like and subscribe for more basketball content and I'll see you guys in the next video.